Many Western Muslims have to cope with assumptions about race as much as religion. But increasing numbers of converts don't have that problem. Fidelma O'Leary was born in Cork into a devout Catholic family that followed that well-worn emigrant trail to America almost 20 years ago. I grew up in a household that prayed the Angelus when the church bells rang, prayed the rosary as a family together almost every evening. For mom and dad, you know, being Catholic wasn't just about going to Mass on Sundays. Being Catholic was something that happened every day. That's why I think for me being Muslim and praying five times a day, it's easy. It was a process of becoming disenchanted with the church. I just pulled away from being a traditional Irish Catholic. Today, Fidelma lives in the Texas state capital, Austin, and is professor of biology at St. Edward's University. You find someone poking around inside your nostril, right? They're just worried about you, <laughs> okay? A college friend of mine gave me a copy of the Quran. I was pretty darn excited to know that there is actually a religion that was what I believed. I've been Muslim for about 25 years and I can remember a time when I was the only convert I knew. Now, I mean, my circle of friends is half converts. Most Friday mornings, Fidelma hosts a prayer group at her home, and among the faithful are two other Irish converts, Eileen and Michelle. Hey, we're three lovely lassies from Erin, and I am the best of them all. <laughs> the world is becoming quite secular, and I think that's okay for a while, but then people look for meaning and they look for significance. Jesus said, I am indeed a servant of Allah. He has given me revelation and made me a prophet. And it's a very simple message at the end of the day. It's a very simple message. There's God. Worship God. We followed Fidelma and her daughter Sarah back to Cork during the Christmas holidays. The journey would deliver an intimate encounter between a modern Muslim and Catholic tradition. When I first told my family I was Muslim, it was difficult for them to hear. They identified very strongly with being Catholic. It was hard for them and they knew nothing about Islam. You talk about misrepresentations of Islam now, well, go back to Ireland in the 70s and it was more harshly misrepresented. I don't think you gave me a kiss. Give me a kiss and a hug. For your auntie. <laughs> What's your favorite auntie? For that one. How's everything? Grace? Yeah. Grace? Grace? Uh, small little part of Cork City that I grew up in as a child. During my childhood, Ireland was completely permeated by things related to the church and Catholicism and I think, you know, growing up next door to the church seemed completely natural. Even after I became Muslim, I used to come there from time to time with my parents just to, you know, show them that respect and, and uh, brought my kids here so they could see it. I'm kind of shocked at myself to remember that I used to go and kneel in front of these statues and pray to them. And the thought of kneeling at a statue of some virtuous person who passed away and praying to that person is ludicrous to me. Well, one of the things I loved 
and still love about Islam is that the relationship with God is direct. It's me and my creator. And I, I don't require um, clergy people. I don't have to go through clergy to have access to God. So I can learn from scholars, but my access to God, my worship is direct. It's, I stand before God and I worship and I, I ask for help and I ask for guidance. And it's a very direct connection. And that means an awful lot to me. What we have in the Quran is we have hints at the magnificence of God. Ar Rahman, Ar Rahim, the most merciful, the most forgiving, all powerful, unimaginable creator, unlike anything created. So I think it's a human tendency to always try to imagine that God is like something created that we can see or hear or taste or touch, but the creator is nothing like what was created. God's creation. Yeah. And this makes me want to submit myself to God.